Hello ladies and gents, welcome to the best possession formation and tactic for eFootball PES 2021. This is very similar to my PES 2020 ultimate formation from last year, but I had to make some adjustments based on the gameplay changes and new mechanics this year. I'll be running through the formation and tactics first before doing some analysis showing you the strong points of this formation and tactic and also the weaknesses as well. I'll be talking about why I've chosen the attacking and defensive instructions during the course of the video, as well as running through various scenarios on how to get the best out of this formation from an attacking and defensive point of view. So let's dive right in and look at the formation and tactics being used. So this is the formation and tactic we're going to use. It's a 3-3-3-1 formation. It's important to have this little diamond here, and I'll explain more on that during the analysis side of the game as I will touch on the instructions as well. So attacking instructions, possession, short pass, central attack and error, maintain formation, and six for support range. Frontline pressure, central containment error, aggressive pressing, 10 for defensive line, one for compactness. And in the advanced instructions, tick attacker and wing rotation. Like I said, I'll do some analysis in game to show you all of the aspects of that formation and tactic that's being used. So what exactly makes a good possession based formation? Well, having more midfielders than your opponent, especially if you want to have great possession in the final third of the pitch, is important to me. With this formation and diamond tactic that I've employed, you can see how easy it is to bypass and pass through Liverpool's 4-3-3 tactic, simply for the fact that we have an overwhelming numerical advantage in that midfield area. So let's take another look at this formation from a possession based point of view. So there's the diamond four in midfield, the attacking midfielder, the defensive midfielder, and the left and right central midfielders. The key point for me is just to how easy it is to pass the ball around and maintain possession of the ball without too much pressure from the opposition. Once we are in the final third, this is where wing rotation becomes so important because your midfielders are going to have to break into the box to create and score opportunities. You'll still need to use the dynamic one twos, but with wing rotation, you won't need to worry too much about sending your midfielders on runs into the box as they will do that for you once you play the ball to your wide players. The defensive midfielder whether it's an anchor man or orchestrator team role, is so important to this formation. He will more or less dictate the play from a deeper position and is generally always open to receive the ball. I would strongly advise against sending him on a player run because you always want him to fall back on and he also adds a layer of protection to your defence. Now, depending on the team roles you choose, you can get your midfielders to move into and alongside your forward, which is what I've highlighted here with Bernardo Silva supporting Aguero. Having high possession during the course of a match isn't just about keeping the ball, it's about winning the ball back quickly. And with the six across midfield like this, it's very easy to stop them passing through you, often forcing your opponent to play a long ball over your midfield, which should be easily swept up by your defenders. Here's one more example of Legend's CPU not able to penetrate my midfield line. And after some probing, they just launch the ball upfield which makes it much easier to win the ball back. With this formation and tactic, you can use different tempos based on your feelings as to how the match is being played out. Sometimes a higher tempo can result in a devastating attack, and with so many moving parts, especially the midfielders running from deep, can cause their defence so many problems with them not picking up the right player at the right time. When your opponent has the ball and your midfield six is in a nice line, you want to position your striker on the nearest midfielder, especially a great ball playing midfielder like Thiago in this example. Sometimes you have to sit somewhere in between two to prevent your opponent playing the ball to him, which is what you're seeing here. Here are a couple more examples where I'm using Aguero to cover a fair amount of ground, just to try and prevent the CPU playing the ball into their midfield. I'd highly advise against using secondary press because you don't want to bring your midfielders out and the only time you want to use secondary press is when you use what I call a manual frontline press, which I'll show you shortly. So it's all about cutting out the passing lanes and preventing their better passes of the ball from getting onto the ball to pick holes in your midfield line. So very important to keep moving your striker around, protecting your midfield and defence. 
This is the manual frontline press that I mentioned. This is where I've used the secondary press to keep one of my midfielders forward to apply a high press on my opponent's defense, switching between my striker and midfielder, forcing them to play the long ball from deep in their own half. I touched on it earlier, but just remember when you do get the ball in the wide areas that your sort of inside midfielder will run into the channel. And that's what you're going to see here with my right central midfielder bursting through in between the fullback and centre back positions. Because you're going to be playing a possession style and the fact that you only have one striker, this means generally attacks build much slower than a typical 4 3 3 but you're going to find it much easier to maintain possession due to that numerical midfield advantage. Once you do get into the final third, that's when you need to get creative. Looking for balls into the channel with the wing rotation or sending midfielders on dynamic one twos or even setting players on player runs using the player select and the right along stick. You can also use your striker to hold up the ball and lay it into the path of midfield runners as long as you just get the timing right. You'll do a lot of passing and probing and it's just about waiting for that chance to open up. Don't force it. Otherwise, you'll lose the ball unnecessarily and obviously be susceptible to a counter-attack. One thing I've learned is not to use the offside trap when the opponent's defence has the ball. I tend to use it to squeeze my defensive midfield together from most formations, but on Legend CPU, they're pretty effective at getting into the wide areas. And with this formation, there's no fullbacks, so that's obviously an issue. So I would avoid using the offside trap because in this scenario, they were able to create their best chance of the match. I'd recommend having three solid defenders who are really good in the air and strong at dealing with long balls. Also having a bit of pace helps as well, because if your opponent's long ball is a success, then there's a fair gap between your defensive midfield, even with a single anchor man in that defensive midfield role. With only one striker, it does make quick counters difficult and certainly relies on the pace of your midfielders. But it is still possible to counter, maybe not at break lightning speeds, but you can still create openings with intelligent passing. Now if you do lose the ball high up the pitch and your midfield six aren't in position, then any ball forward to their striker, you want to try and apply pressure on him to either force him to play the ball backwards so you can get your team shape back, or try and win the ball by making a tackle. I'll be bringing out a tutorial on this particular tackle later on because I find it really overpowering. That, ladies and gents, concludes this video. Let's see if we can get over 200 likes. And let me know in the comments section if you prefer this style of video for the best formation tactics or whether you prefer to watch the whole match. Anyway, thank you all for watching this video and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care of yourselves and stay safe. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.